Welcome to Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge. My name is Dr. Dave Namron, the host of Lippy Logic. Today's segment is about surgically treating fibrosis and getting the maximum decongestion, a very important topic. There are a lot of things that can be done to slow the progression of fibrosis. There are a lot of things that are being used externally to improve fibrosis, fascia blasters we've talked about, quadrivus, other types of decongestive therapy. But to really get the, the best improvements, you, you really do need to go in there and release the fibrosis and get maximum decongestion as part of the lipedema surgery. It's a very important component to it. And, and quite honestly, because I'm in there, um, there is so much scar tissue in a lot of patients that you have to. You, you, can, you can't get a lot of improvement externally in a lot of these patients. You've got to go in internally and release that surgically. I've said that proper liposuction for lipedema is not only about simply removing fat and playing that game, how much fat I've removed. You, you want to maximize that, but that's not the whole story. An equal part to the story is how well the surgeon knows how to deal with fibrosis and get the most improvement. It's not only about removing fat. Fibrosis is what really causes problems. It's not just the fat. The fibrosis is scar tissue that plays havoc with things. It strangulates the tissue. You know, you know main areas I've said is that the surgeon has to, has to do the best job getting rid of all the fibrosis. There are certain areas that we tend to see fibrosis more and other areas less so. Calves and ankles, for example, tends to be a very fibrotic area, especially the lower calf and ankle area, and gets very hard from the outside. The area around the knees, the lower thigh area, above the knees, the medial knees, another common area for more fibrosis. The outer thigh area can be fibrotic. Uh, the hip area, the pelvic girdle area, another area of fibrosis, you can see more of it. Um, behind the arms, behind the elbow is another common area for more fibrosis. But you can't always just predict that. Sometimes patients have it diffusely. You'll, you'll go in in patients and their, their upper inner thigh area is full of fibrosis. So you've got to treat the fibrosis properly everywhere. I've also showed in, in other videos I've done how uh, lipedema fat looks different than just regular normal fat. It has a whiter appearance to it. Normal fat is more like chicken fat. It has a yellowish color to it. Lipedema fat generally is whiter and the more fibrotic the area and the more fibrotic the patient, the whiter it's gonna be. Why is that? Because fibrosis is scar tissue. Scar tissue is white in color. It's dense collagen. I've also said that when you're doing the surgery, you wanna do every millimeter of it, of areas called cosmetic units by myself. You don't wanna leave fibrosis behind. You wanna really do it completely. There's a multi-step process I have to going about my surgery that treats fibrosis properly and completely. And there's several different steps to it that I'm gonna run through. Step one is tumescent anesthesia. And the word tumes means to blow up with fluid. So you are not just only numbing it, you are hydro dissecting. Hydro means is water and dissecting is to, to break apart. You are help, you're breaking things apart with the water. That is the first step of it. Terminology you see, you'll see out there is water-assisted liposuction, which is a certain technique using water, but quite honestly, every surgeon uses variations of water-assisted liposuction. It's never done without any water whatsoever, what's called a dry technique. You're either doing the wet technique or you're doing it completely, you're too messing areas completely so the tissue is not taking any more fluid at all. It's completely hydrisected to help first release fibrosis, to create vasoconstriction, so there's very little bleeding. You're creating a clean plane, but that's just step one. Step two is the first pass of liposuction. Not only to so-called debulk, I don't like to look at it that way. You really are doing a perfect job in your liposuction, staying in that safe plane, bring that layer down precisely. But in that process, you are mechanically releasing a lot of fibrous tissue. We all use a device called Power Switch Liposuction, PAL, which is a tool that many years ago I used to just discount as just, 
you know, so-called saving elbow grease, but I do like PAL a lot. I like it for, not, for its ability to release fibrosis. It works almost like a Sonicare toothbrush, as I've shown in videos, um, vibrating very quickly. And what that does with the right types of cannulas, and I'll just grab one here, there's certain cannulas I use that have a certain tip to them to do a better job of releasing fibrosis. Other cannulas, such as this, do not do as good of a job in terms of releasing fibrosis. And if you use the cannulas properly, mechanically, you can release a lot of fibrosis. A lot of it is involving turning the suction off during the liposuction and just using mechanically the cannula to release fibrosis. Because even after the first step of wall or tumescent anesthesia, there's fibrosis there. So you gotta release it mechanically. Step three, I'll, I'll then go back with Vaser that I brought in many years ago into my practice. As we'll talk about in the tools section, segment that I'm gonna do, I don't like unnecessary steps and just doing things for the sake of just doing things. But Vaser I do find very helpful in almost all patients. Vaser is using ultrasonic energy to further emulsify the fat and further release fibrosis, especially under the skin. It does a beautiful job of sort of melting that fibrosis under the skin and creating a smooth surface of the skin. And then, finally, the fourth step is the fine sculpting step, using smaller cannulas to refine the sculpting but still, I'm gonna tell you, after you two mess, after you mechanically release in step two, after you vaser in step three, there may still be fibrosis remaining that you have to still release and break up in your fine sculpting with things also. So, you know, again, it's very important to take care of fibrosis. This is my surgical technique and how I go about doing it maximally. And then finally, I'll end up, end up by saying that, that fibrosis, like I've said, really creates a lot of the problems with it, uh, with, with lipedema. Fibrosis is scar tissue. It, it, it will tend to damage things, and it really is the main cause of affecting the lymphatics and potentially causing lipolymphedema. And that's why it's so important to treat properly and completely. And like I've also said, it's not always related to the stage of the disease. You may have a stage four patient that's very advanced, that might weigh 400 pounds, that has very little fibrosis, that has soft, fluffy fat. You might have a stage one patient that might weigh 120 pounds with a very thin layer of fat, but yet there's a lot of fibrosis in that layer of fat. So hopefully that was a very good education about fibrosis, understanding it, and my way of treating it. My name is Dr. Dave Damron. This is Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge. Thank you for tuning in.